Okay, welcome to the call. Uh, thanks for tuning in once more. This is uh, Noel Lyons with another 30-minute uh, motivational fitness call for you. Uh, today's guest is uh, Gillian Hood Gableson, the founder and president of Healthier Outcomes. A popular and in-demand fitness and intuitive eating coach, uh, Gillian understands the unique needs of busy women in different ages and stages of life. Gillian brings to each client a unique and rare perspective on what it takes to eliminate the diet mentality and overcome emotional eating. For the last 14 years, Gillian has dedicated her life to educating, guiding and helping women lose weight and get in shape whilst learning to eat their favorite foods without feeling guilty or punishing themselves. Gillian holds a Master of Sports degree science from United States Sports Academy and a Bachelor's degree in Kinesiology and Exercise Science from San Jose State University and is an idea master level personal fitness professional. Gillian is often quoted in various print media including Energy for Women, Costco Connection, Better Nutrition and the Sacramento Business Journal. Hi Gillian, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Excellent, that's all very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, today we're going to talk about intuitive eating, and it's certainly a call that I'm sort of looking forward to. Lance Armstrong is back in the news once more, and many of you would be familiar with his now famous book, It's Not About the Bike, and that's the sort of theme I've chosen for today's call. Because first of all, uh, you know, looking for your work, Gillian, it's not about the weight. Yeah, basically, you know, I've, I've taken a, a completely, you know, 180 degree turn from, uh, the usual diet and fitness industry. And instead of addressing, you know, dieting or trying to help somebody lose weight or, you know, all of those different things that everybody wants to do, what I address with people is how to create a, a healthy, a, a peaceful relationship with food and with your body. And by doing that, then these other things happen. The, um, the weight will come off and you'll naturally, you know, want to be more fit and want to feel more healthy and you'll start doing those things that you, that you need to do to be that way. So for me, it's, it's not about losing weight. Losing weight is a side effect of, uh, intuitive eating basically so that's that's why i say it's not about the weight excellent and it's that sort of diet mentality you're never really taking charge because one you're just following diet program after diet program and whatever that guru or that that organization is suggesting you're you're never really taking responsibility one for you know the quality and quantity of the food you're eating and uh, really getting to the root cause of the problem which is you know why you're eating in the first place that's absolutely right, and I love that concept of taking personal responsibility and and really kind of owning up to what it is you are doing because so many people will either pass it off as, you know, oh, this diet just doesn't work or, or you know, they'll blame themselves too and say, oh, well, I just have no willpower or whatever, but the fact is that you aren't, when you're dieting, you're following someone else's rules, and it's always... You know, I don't understand why all these people have so much power <laughs> over the mainstream public that, that, you know, they're just looked upon as, you know, they have all the answers because this diet industry has been going on for years and years and nothing has really worked. Or works for like long, because I think that's the key thing. They, they do, mm -hmm. they, some do work very short term, don't they? 14, 21 yeah. days. <laughs> and yeah, that, you get on that exactly cycle it. where you feel really good because you lost lots of weight, but as mm -hmm. soon as you go back to, let's say, real life in inverted commas, of course it piles back on and studies suggest and add an awful lot more. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, and, and so, you know, based on that, diets do work in the short term, many of them, but they don't work in the long term and they actually cause you to gain more weight than when you actually started the diet. So it's it's really... It's really a tough cycle to get into, and when you are in that diet mentality, it's really hard to break out of it. But uh, basically, you know, when we're when we're eating, when we're overeating, which is you know basically a diet mentality, you're eating according to the diet and all the rules and following the rules, and then of course something's going to happen, and the rebellious nature of your subconscious is going to say, "You can't tell me what to do," and then you start overeating. Uh, because of deprivation or irritation of, of the diet or it's just too hard or whatever. And at that point, you're completely out of control. 
And I have so many people that tell me they just want to get back in control of what they're eating and their diet and their exercise and all those things. And, and I tell them it's really not about being in control because when you're dieting and following all the rules, you're in control. You're beating your body into submission. But when you are eating intuitively, which, you know, we'll explain later, basically you're making choices. So you get to decide what you're going to do. You get to decide if you're going to eat that piece of cake or not. And if you do decide to eat that piece of cake, you're not going to feel guilty because if you feel guilty, then you'll, you'll start thinking about your diet that you're going to go on. You're going to skip your dinner. I'm going to start my next diet tomorrow, which is going to lead to another, you know, last supper type of eating, um, you know, hours and hours and hours of feeling guilty, thinking about how you have to go to the gym for three hours to burn it off. It's just crazy. And people spend, you know, 75% of their day thinking about food and weight and their body and the next diet and all of these things. It's just, it's just crazy making. And it can actually be detrimental to long-term health. I mean, we now realize that you're almost better off to stay fat rather than yo-yo diet and, you know, fluctuations in weight in terms of uh, long-term health? Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, it's very destructive to the body and, and not only from a health perspective, because I think that I think everybody understands that for the most part, uh, but it's not, it's not always a motivating factor. You know, people aren't, te- aren't always motivated by trying to become more healthy unless they get some, you know, awful diagnosis or prognosis from a doctor. But, um, uh, the, I completely forgot what we were talking about. No, but, um, <laughs> the point is a lot of these are like external goals, aren't they? You know, weight, health, etc. cetera. Yeah. You made a very good yeah. point earlier in the conversation <laughs> that uh, it's when, when it's about personal responsibility, it's about you, it's about the way you show up in the world. It's far more meaningful, isn't it? Which uh, actually brings us on to the second point. It's not about the food mm-hmm. either. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, most people have heard it's not about the weight. This is quite sort of revolutionary. You know, it's not even about the food. Right. And I love this concept. You know, everybody thinks, okay, well, if I could just you know, get in control and eat, you know, these foods based on this diet or that diet or whatever. Um, If I could just do it perfectly, everything's going to be fine. Well, maybe they do that. You know, they go on the, the diet of the week and they lose weight. And it's very interesting to them when their life hasn't completely changed that, you know, they still have a a bad marriage or they still don't like their job or they still have, you know, problems with their friends or or whatever the case is. It's not this miraculous change. And a lot of people might even be really self-conscious when they do lose weight. You know, they're getting noticed more. And I know that when I lost weight a long, long time ago before learning about intuitive eating, I was I was really at a weight that I never thought I could reach. And I was scared and about three weeks after getting my weight, you know, my weigh in and my measuring, um, I went on a four day binge. So it isn't about the food. The food to me is a symptom, just like the weight is a symptom. It's a symptom of the diet mentality. So <clears throat> if you are trying to fix what's going on and, you know, you're trying to, um, for example, you know, if you have a leaky pipe um, and you want to fix this pipe, you're not going to fix it by putting a bucket underneath it. You're just going to, you know, keep collecting water and you're going to keep pouring the bucket out and it's going to be nonstop. Same thing with the dieting. You're going to diet, lose weight, gain more weight than you probably did before you started and you're still going to be in the same boat except that your health is going to be further impaired and you're going to have more weight. And and your body's going to change in 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 the way that it uh, stores weight, so you're actually going to be able to store weight easier, store fat easier, which is not what we want. So if you go to the root of the issue, such as the leaky pipe, if you you know tape it up or replace it or, or whatever you have to do to fix the pipe from leaking, if you go to the root of the issue with the eating and with the weight, then you can really um, really make some progress. So for example, most people who overeat are overeating because of emotional stuff. They've learned through um, their upbringing, through conditioning at school and parents and friends that uh you know, food is love. Uh, food is a control mechanism. Food, there's so many different, I mean, I could go on for days, all the psychological yeah. um, things. I, I, that I get. mean, in a nutshell, Jillian, you, you can yeah. actually argue that everything we do is to change the way we feel. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's that exactly. strong, a powerful instinct within people, within mm-hmm. humans. And that's the importance of emotional mastery, if you like, or, you know, intuitive eating, which we will come on. But, um, you know, going yeah. back to it's not about the food. I think that, you know, if that's the case, the last thing is that people don't need more information on nutrition, on diet. That's right. <laughs> they have more than enough. Yeah. And this yeah, I is think most people could write their own book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Books. <laughs> and this is where very cleverly you've come up with eight major roadblocks. Because literally, there, you know, there, there's uh, constraints that are holding people back. It's not about getting more and more information. Right, right, absolutely. Basically, you know, the, the way that I start off um, with intuitive eating is that we don't discuss food. Food isn't, isn't talked about. I may have a client fill out a food diary, but that's strictly for me and for them to create awareness of what they're doing, what they're doing and, you know, why they're eating, looking at their feelings, their emotions, their environment. Um, but basically I just tell them, show me the good, bad, and ugly. I don't care. I'm not going to judge you on what you're eating. It's not about writing it down so you be good. It's about writing it down to become aware. And so a lot of the work that I do and, and with these roadblocks that we, we overcome is creating awareness because that's really the first step. And most people don't even realize they think that it's willpower that's the problem or it's the diet doesn't work. It's stupid. And it, that's not the case. So um, looking at... Uh, your foundation. I, I like to build a foundation of why you want to learn to eat intuitively and overcome the overeating and all of those kinds of things. And it's got to be it's got to be bigger than losing weight because you know you know as well as I do that losing weight that's a that's something that lasts maybe two three weeks keep motivated. Um, yep. So there has to be a bigger reason. And I like to go into people look at people's values and and those kinds of things. Um, and we work on overcoming the diet mentality. And then we don't even really start talking about food till we come to the, the basics of intuitive eating. And that's where uh, I talk about the core tools for learning how to eat. And I should, I should go back. Um, in, with intuitive eating, this is how everyone knew to eat when they were born. So um, this isn't something that you have to learn. It's like fresh, you know, brand new. It's something that you have to relearn. I was going to ask, I mean, is uh-huh. intuition, it's a skill. It's something obviously we come a lot better at, particularly yeah. the right sort of coaching. Um, yeah. Is it something everybody can become better at or some people naturally more intuitive than others? And, uh, you know, w- what exactly is intuition? Because um, my understanding, you know, very quickly, if I can throw this one at you, is what? that you've got your conscious, you know, the uh, brain uh, in terms of what you're thinking and feeling. And then there's like the non-conscious and literally intuition is when the non-conscious actually gets a message through to your conscious. Mm-hmm. Yes. Would that sound to you being the expert? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds right. It's kind of like, um, you know, you get a hunch or an inkling or, you know, a gut feeling. You know, that's a really good word or phrase for intuitive eating. Yeah. But, but yeah, that absolutely. There's actually brain-like cells in the gut, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? So yeah. it's not as crazy as it actually sounds. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah? We've all had that gut feeling. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And And, you know, you... Everybody probably knows somebody who eats intuitively um, and they don't even realize that they do it. But if you find a person like this, they are great to to watch and just model your own behavior based on what they do. And typically, you know, what they do is they're going to eat when they're hungry and they're going to stop when they're full and they get they eat whatever they want. So some of these people, you know, they're they're at their natural weight. They gen- generally tend to stay there. Uh, they don't obsess over food and they don't talk about food all the time, um, but they may be eating, you know, what what we would term garbage all the time, and yet they're still not gaining weight. And it doesn't make any sense to people who are professional dieters how these people can stay thin and and eat all this garbage. But, you know, intuitive eating, that's what kind of what we do. We say, okay, all foods are legal. You can eat anything you want. And you never have to eat anything you don't want again. You know, don't you don't don't worry about that. And people get really scared. So like, what about my health? What about nutrition? What about getting all my you know um, vitamins and minerals and blah blah blah? And I just tell them, you know, in the standard uh, Western diet, even if you go out and eat a junk all day long, you're still going to get your nutrition. It's really hard to to um, get be malnourished, you know, in in our world, in the Western world. Um, <laughs> The food's organic, <laughs> surely. Yes. <laughs> a lot of fast food now, and uh, obviously they had the whole film, didn't they? The person who lived on McDonald's for a whole month. <laughs> so, but I take your yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people really worry about, you know, what's going to happen. But the thing is that as you be, as you get in touch with your body, which is what this intuition is all about, 
Yes. Your body will tell you when it's hungry and when it's full. And I promise, you know, anyone who's listening who doesn't believe me, it's true because I've done it. <laughs> and if I could do it, anyone can because I was I was very, very skeptical. Um, but your body will tell you what it wants. It'll tell you when it's done. And eventually, as you go through this process and you, you develop this peaceful relationship with food, you gain self-esteem, you overcome emotional eating, stop the negative self-talk, all of those things that, that are part of intuitive eating, then you're, you're going to have this, this conversation with your body and it's going to start asking for more nutritious things. Doesn't mean you, you will never eat chocolate again because it'll ask for chocolate. Mine does, but. Mine does. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, you, I basically you're saying you, you take the power back first yourself. Yes. And then it's an ongoing process of uh, enlightened awareness as to what your body's telling you. Exactly, that's Brilliant. exactly it. And I, I kind of see it. I kind of see the whole thing as is major issue of trust because we don't trust our bodies because we've been we've learned to not trust our bodies growing up. We've been told things like um, you can't possibly be hungry. It's not dinner time yet, or um, you know don't don't eat that. You'll spoil your lunch, or you know whatever, or eat everything on your plate because then you can have dessert. You know all the crazy things. So we don't trust our body to tell us when it's hungry and when it's full. And like. Likewise, our body doesn't trust us, uh, whether that's our subconscious or whatever, to feed it properly because we've been dieting and then overeating, so it becomes very efficient at storing fat. So the trust between you and your body and your body and you has to be repaired. And, um, and when those things are repaired, that's when intuitive eating just becomes natural. And you never have to really pay attention ever again. You know, it's just like, oh, I'm hungry. I think I want this. And then, okay. you know, you eat it and you move on with your day instead of obsessing over it. Yeah. And of course, you know, you mentioned the cereal dieters earlier and the encyclopedia mm-hmm. of knowledge that they've built up. You know, mm-hmm. we've often uh, been taught this 20 minute window, you know, don't eat till you're completely full. Just wait a bit because right. uh, it's the body tricking you. But, um, you know, it, it is about a line in the body and the mind once more, isn't it? Because your mind's telling you one thing, but, you know, if you if you become more aware, your body can start to uh, uh, guide the mind a little bit better. Would that be a absolutely. good way to Absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it is really amazing. And that's how, you know, people live for years and years and years. In fact, you know, not till recently, people were more worried about getting enough food than, than dieting. But, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely true. It is, because there's a whole generation that went through the Depression, then the Second mm-hmm. World War, and it's only yeah. in more recent years that we've just had, you know, this uh, choice. Yeah, yeah. That's... Well, maybe now with the economy going the way it is, it'll change, and I'll be out of a job. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But they, they say know. when you sit down, uh, you know, that you sit down. There's three generations of you sitting down at the meal table, mm-hmm. and that's the study of epigenetics, is it epigenetic? Yes. Yeah. And I find that fascinating because, again, there's all that intelligence which is guiding you towards what is the best food choices, and that's literally mm-hmm. three generations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I can remember my grandmother, um, you know, I was always the good eater because I ate a lot. And so she would, you know, I'd go over to her house and she'd say, oh, don't you want seconds? You're going to make me feel bad if you don't want, if you don't eat seconds, you don't like my food. And so to please her, I always, I always ate and I was always happy to do it, but um, I overate. And then as I got older and, and was becoming a teenager and putting on weight, then she'd say, oh, looks like you're putting on weight. Better take that off. You know, it's so, it's just so funny to look at you know, what, what we're faced with every day from our family and our peers and, and yeah. the influence they have. Yeah, so instead yeah. of all that inner talk coming in and haunting you, if you like, you mm-hmm. become responsible for your own choices. Yes. It's kind of, you know, it is a question of taking the power back. So yeah. um, how do we cross over? Is it, is it, you know, is it a process or have you, yeah. have you got it? Uh, <laughs> oh, there, you do it overnight? Yeah, there, there's <laughs> several, you know, there's so many different ways to go about getting back into intuitive eating. And uh, mm-hmm. there's, you know, there's books and there's, there's, I don't know, like TV programs and there's coaches and there's programs, whatever. But um, and everybody, I believe, has to find their own journey because it's not a one size fits all. You know, unlike a diet where they say, oh, well, you know, this will work for all you people or, you know, whatever. Um, so basically, if somebody wanted to get started, the, the first thing, and this just seems so basic, but it's amazing when you try to do it. The first thing is just to start asking yourself during the day, am I hungry? And a lot of people are not going to be able to answer that question. They're going to have no clue whatsoever. So the more that you ask it, um, the more you'll start to become aware of it. And eventually, it'll just be, yeah. And then eventually, it'll just be, you know, something in you says, oh, it's time to eat instead of you having to ask. And, and then paying and, attention. And, and, uh-huh. Whenever you ask yourself, that and the answer is yes. How do you handle that? If you're hungry? <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I've had had the comment back from uh, you know one of the members on Lead Bread into Wellness that they're constantly thinking about food all day long. That would be interesting to find out, you know, what what their their situation is and how they how they approach food. But if you find that you're hungry, um, and you know the answer is yes, well, it can be very scary to go ahead and let yourself eat because you've been so you know rule driven and people tell you when to eat or or whatever. Um, but then you ask yourself, well, what is it that I want? Another difficult question. So you know, it you may not know, and or it may come up with something that you think is bad. That's terrible. So you know, even before you start asking yourself if you're hungry, it's a good idea to start making all foods permissible, which is a scary thought. And you just do it. You know, you just do it slowly. Um, whatever you know, you can handle, so you're not pushing yourself too hard. Um, but yeah, you decide what you want to eat. You know, see if it's there, and go ahead and eat it. While you're eating it, you want to be asking yourself, "Am I getting?" close to full or satisfied and um, you know again that's one of those questions that you really have to work on and think about am I getting full what does full feel like most of the time you're not going to know what full feels like until you get overly full so it's okay to overeat if it happens it happens and part of this process is eliminating guilt because every time you overeat or every time you get too hungry or every time you um, eat something you didn't really want to eat whatever the case may be you're learning something so there's never a mistake it's always a learning an experience and that's what I love about this you're not bad or good you're just learning and you're you're getting back your power and your intuition and, and, and your freedom basically yeah and if you're eliminating guilt then you're eliminating stress as oh, well yeah. aren't you yeah lots of stress and, <laughs> and obviously stress in today's world is a major major problem yeah and the reason why we don't even digest food properly mm-hmm. and get the full benefits from it right absolutely and, you know you've got a great concept of this like self-care buffer zone Self-care is is extremely important in, you know, I, I've seen this, this pattern or this need for self-care in so many areas of life. And uh, basically when we are overeating for emotional reasons, almost every time that means that there's some kind of need that's not getting met. So it might be that, you know, sim- simple as we're tired, we need to sleep but we eat instead, Um, you know, or we're bored. And so we eat because we're bored instead of finding something else to do. And it could be something very um, emotional, you know, too, something very big going on in your life, a big stressor or whatever. So having self-care at the front of your mind is really important because in order to overcome overeating, you've got to get your needs met. So this could be anything from... um, you know, the typical ones that we always hear, like take a bubble bath and all that. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But it could be, you know, talking to somebody or taking a walk or taking a nap or, um, you know, my favorite thing is petting my cat. <laughs> She's definitely sure. my stress reliever. Um, you know, there's so many different things and you have to figure out what is it, you know, what am I feeling? These are the two big questions. What am I feeling and what do I need? And Often, you know, if you can figure out what you're feeling, you might still say, well, I need food because <laughs> that's yeah. typical. That's where our brain goes. But yeah, um, condition. yeah, but you can start finding other things because if you eat and you stuff the problems down with food, those emotions down, they're going to come back up. Once you're out of your food coma, they're going to come back where if you get your needs met, those emotions are probably going to settle down and, and you're going to you know, feel a lot more peaceful and a lot less stressed. So self-care is extremely important. And um, I have so many female clients that just have to be superwoman and get it all done and put themselves last. And they're completely depleted and exhausted and can't lose weight. And I tell them you have to put yourself first no matter what. And it's really hard, but once they do, they realize that they're more effective for everybody else. It's the, the typical um, the typical analogy of, you know, when you get on an airplane and they tell you, if you're an adult with a child, they tell you, put your mask on first before you put the child's mask on because you need to have enough oxygen to be able to take care of that child. So you have to take care of yourself first. And it, it's the same thing. We're just, especially women, we're, we're just not conditioned to do that. We're supposed to be martyrs and take care of everyone else. Sure. And it's, it's all about putting your baggage away, isn't it? On the plane. Yeah. You learn to do that. Right? And yeah. life is very much the same. You've got to uh-huh. learn to put your baggage exactly. away and forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> and the basic premise too is that, you know, your needs are going to get met regardless of whether you're aware of them or not. Mm-hmm. So it's far empowering to be aware of them and then to be proactive in your responses. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and to find the right the right thing to meet those needs because that's just it. We we put aside our needs, we ignore them. Oh no, I'm tough. I got to get through this. I have all these responsibilities, and we still get our needs met. It's just that we do it with food and don't yeah. even realize that's what we're doing. And then we gain weight, and then we're like, well, why can't I lose weight? There you go. 
plain and simple. It's, you know, not getting your needs met. Excellent. So for somebody who'd like to take this further, they can go to your website, mm-hmm. which is www.healthieroutcomes.com, and you've got a free report, The Six Steps to Guilt-Free Eating. Right, right. That, t- that talks a lot about this intuitive eating process. Okay, which is a great intro. So excellent. It, it, it sounds very intriguing, Gillian, and I think it's, you know, it's definitely ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. But uh, if we believe the latest figures, uh, we're, it's not a question of the fact we're less active than, say, 20, 30 years ago. It really does seem that we're eating a lot more and yes. a lot more of the wrong sort of foods. Absolutely. I would agree with that. And it does seem to be a response to all that's going on around us nowadays. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There, yeah. <laughs> After September 11th, there was a lot of um, – there were some studies done about obesity rates and, and eating in and comfort foods. It was pretty amazing, you know, right after that, all the how people responded. Of course, we've had the financial crashes of recent weeks. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so. I don't watch the news anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. It's Excellent. But you are an expert on intuitive eating, so <laughs> if someone does want to follow up, you're the girl, go-to girl. Brilliant. Jillian, it's been really good speaking to you. Thank you. Thank Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No, really good. And uh, thank you, everybody else who's been listening. We'll speak again soon.